Hey everybody, happy Monday. Happy Monday, everyone. We've got a cool versus video for you today, and that is the discus versus the severum. You may have heard it said that the severum is actually the poor man's discus. I don't think that's exactly true. We're gonna talk about them both, the advantages and disadvantages of each. So hopefully, if you're considering these two fish, you can make a better informed decision. All right, I think we should definitely kick off this competition with color because that's going to be a big one that you're going to be looking for some really awesome fish especially as a centerpiece you want a lot of bang for your buck for color now i think that the discus is going to come out ahead for color for a number of reasons one the saturation of color and the variety of colors i mean how many different colors and they have fun names too for they're, the discus because they're, they're kind of on my list they're on my radar i kind of want them just saying there is no doubt that the discus is going to supply a lot more color than severums. That's not to say that severums aren't colorful. There is a reason why we have them in our fish room. And one of those reasons is they have some really cool color, but the discus by far are one of the most colorful fish in all the freshwater fish keeping. And they, as you mentioned, they have a wide variety of colors. So we're gonna have to go, discus gets a major advantage in the color spectrum when we compare these two fish. But that's not the only thing we have to consider when we're comparing the two fish. I think another one, another aspect to consider is activity level. I think you're generally going to see a little bit more activity out of your severums compared to the discus. Yep. And not only that, I also think when it comes to personality, I think the severums, and I know some yeah. of you are gonna disagree, yeah. and that's okay. You can leave your thoughts in the description below or in the comments below, but I do think the severums have a little bit more personality. They seem to recognize you a little bit more when you come up to the tank. They seem to just be a little bit more interested mm -hmm. in human beings. Yeah. But the discus are still cool and they still have personality. After all, they're both cichlids. But I give a slight edge in terms of activity and personality to the severum. So the next category, I think we should talk about size. And again, the discus come out a little bit ahead, especially if you're looking for a large fish. I have seen both fish fully grown and we have severums fully grown in our fish yeah. room and they're both sizable fish. The discus though, they do get larger. Now that can be good and bad. Obviously it's cool if you want a large centerpiece fish with some color and personality. The thing you have to consider though is the size of the tank, which goes hand in hand with the size of the fish. In both cases, I don't think I would be comfortable keeping discus or severums in a tank that's smaller than a 90 gallon. Ideally, I'm looking at a six foot tank and a six foot tank that's gonna be a little bit taller like your 150s or maybe even your 180 gallon or your 210s to really get a nice group of either one of these fish going. So they're both going to be relatively sizable fish. And by the way, if you want more detailed information on either one of these fish, we've done species profiles on both. I will put them in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below if you want a lot more information about how to care for them, how to feed them, the tanks and all that stuff. But when it comes to discus, they are gonna get a little bit larger and quite possibly might need a little bit larger tank. Although again, with the severums being a little bit more active, mm, yeah. that could play a role in them wanting a slightly larger tank as well. Now for you aquascapers out there, if a beautiful aquascape is right up your alley, which it is mine, your severums, keep this in mind. If you give them beautiful plants, a nice aquascape, they're gonna eat it. They're gonna eat the entire aquascape, that's right. They're gonna eat the tank and all. You're yep. just gonna find fish on the ground and no tank left whatsoever. No, Yep. they are going to eat the plants. At least our severums have eaten yeah. every green thing that we've ever put in the tank. That includes hornwort, that includes guppy grass and mm -hmm. duckweed. We actually mm -hmm. feed that stuff to our severums because they really enjoy it. And you would, if you watch our videos, where we have severums, there are no live plants, None. there's no duckweed because they eat it all. Where the discus, yeah. You can build a, a nicer aquascape with them because one, not only do they not eat the plants like the severums do, but they don't tend to dig quite like severums do. And severums don't always dig. True. But every once in a while, especially if they're thinking about breeding, they might dig a little pit next to a piece of driftwood or under driftwood or by a rock. And so it's just something to consider. I don't consider either one of these fish to be like heavy diggers, but if somebody's going to dig in a substrate, it's probably gonna be your severums more so than your discus. Now the next category, and that is just general 
how easy these fish are to keep. Ooh. And I think here's where we start to see some big differences. While the main advantage we've talked about for the discus is the amazing color, there, that amazing color is going to come with a little bit of extra upkeep when you compare them to the Severum. And what I mean by that is discus tend to like warmer temperatures. And so instead of keeping fish at the normal, I don't know, 76 to 80 degrees, where the Severum are quite happy, the discus, you want to raise that temperature up maybe 83, 85. Some people keep them even warmer up in the upper 80s. And so it's going to take a little bit of extra effort when you're keeping discus. The other thing to consider is discus tend to be a little bit more sensitive to changes in water parameters, and they have a more narrow range in which they will be thriving in certain water parameters. And so what I mean by that is, yes, they want the warmer water. They often do better in softer water with a little bit of a lower pH, so seven or lower, where the severums tend to just be more tolerable. We keep them all the way at an eight, a pH of 8.2. Yeah. Most of our tanks in our fish room, we heat the room, they're around 78 to 80 degrees. They live in that water, they thrive in that water, they've lived a long time, they will breed in that water. Where the discus, maybe not so much. I know a lot of people keep discus at a little bit higher pH, maybe slightly higher uh, water hardness, but to really see them thrive, to really see them at their best, often you're looking at a lower pH, lower water hardness, and so if you don't have those things, they can be more difficult to keep. Mm -hmm. The other thing to think about, and I think a lot of people overlook this, is their diet. Discus often oh. like a higher protein diet. Severums, as we've already mentioned, they really like the plants, they like the green stuff. What happens when you feed the discus a higher protein diet is you're gonna to have to really be on your water change game. So if you're feeding them a large amount of blood worms or beef heart, especially if you want them to breed, it's going to follow up the water a little bit more. And so you're gonna to have to do potentially more water changes relative to what you would do with your severums. Now, I think we should definitely cover cost because that is a huge issue that you need to keep in mind. And discus are gonna come with a little higher price tag. I know even at the swap that we were at, when you're probably gonna get some pretty decent prices, they're pretty pricey. Absolutely. It's not uncommon to see small discus, maybe about the size of two and a half or three inches, going anywhere between 30 and $60. And by the time you get them into the five to six inch range, they can be 50 to $80 or maybe yeah, more, more, depending on the variety where it's very easy to go to a pet store, find severums, whether they're the golds or the greens or the red shoulders, and often you're going to see them about the size of a 50 cent piece or so, and you can get them for less than $10. And they're going to grow up to be magnificent looking fish. So there is a major cost difference, and when you consider the other things like the tank maintenance, the fact that they might be a little bit more sensitive to changes in water parameters and require well, slightly different water parameters than most other types of fish. When you consider all of those things, I think overall I would almost consider the two fish to be a draw. Yeah. Now, the other thing to consider is the breeding aspect. Mm. So if you're someone who likes to breed fish, discus can be a little bit more challenging, again, because in order to breed the discus, you're going to want to mimic their wild type water parameters more closely, where as I've already mentioned, for us, we can breed severums in water that's around a pH of eight and a water hardness around 10 degrees, and we're still getting them to breed. The discus and, that, and those water parameters, first of all, they'd be uncomfortable just living in those water parameters. And second of all, they're probably not gonna successfully breed for you where you're gonna be able to keep the fry and grow them out. Growing out the fry for discus takes a little bit more work compared to severums as well. All right, everyone, so that is a quick little comparison, severums versus discus. For my money, overall, I think what we're doing in our fish room kind of speaks for itself. I tend to lean towards the Severums because I find them easier. They're cheaper. They're still absolutely beautiful fish. I know if you had a choice, what would your choice be? Me? <laughs> both. Both? Yeah. Absolutely both Sorry. are great fish. It really just depends on how much work you want to do, the types of environments that you can set up for your fish. But once you have those things figured out, both are a great choice. Again, we've got species profiles. I'll put them in the description below. Appreciate you being here and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.